is on his way to Rome to appeal his case to Caesar. Paul in the preceding chapters were persecuted and he was prosecuted by the religious people, by the local judges. He was persecuted by his own people, the Jews, the chief priests and the head men of the Jews. He was accused of crimes. It's difficult to determine just what law he broke. And so the judges were having a difficult time. Those who were sitting and hearing Paul's case and the charges against him were having a difficult time trying to determine just what Paul was guilty of. They found no fault in him. But we find in the word that the religious people were accusing him of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when we study the word, that's the only thing that we can find that they had against Paul, that he was spreading the good news of salvation through Jesus the Christ. And he gave the people an account in the court of his conversion, wherein he had a one-on-one -on -one encounter with Jesus the Christ. And he talked about his work for the kingdom of the Lord. For this he was deemed guilty, and he was deemed guilty and to such an extent that he should be put to death. Does not that remind you of someone else? Huh? Does not that remind you of Jesus the Christ? Who was led from court to court, from judge to judge, just because he proclaimed the good news, because he declared that he could forgive sin, that he declared that he is the son of God. Mm. In the book of Acts, we find the growth. The Acts is a book of the growth, the expansion, the enlargement of the Christian church. Talks about even the persecution of the church. Because as you remember, Jesus has now gone on back to glory. But he sent the Holy Spirit to reside, to be a permanent resident in his people. Hallelujah. Therefore, the apostle Paul has no problem. He has no problem standing for the Lord. And even Paul has no fear of going to Rome because he was declaring his right as a Roman citizen to appeal his case to Caesar. We don't know if he would see Caesar himself or maybe it was some court there. But he had the right which he exercised as a Roman citizen to appeal his case to Caesar. And isn't that just like God? Huh? Because Paul wanted to go to Rome. Paul had written a letter to the Romans in the book of Romans, and he desired to see them. Mm -hmm. Bless your name, Jesus. He did not know when he would see them. But God put that in his spirit to go to Rome. The church in Rome was composed mostly of Jews and some Gentiles. Praise your name, O oh God. It is thought that perhaps the church was built after the Holy Spirit descended at Pentecost. And maybe there were some people there at Pentecost uh, who went back to Rome and started the church there. But people who are 
of God have a hunger and a desire to be with each other. And we find that Paul had this desire to be with his fellow Christians to spread the good news there in person. And now here he is because he had been persecuted and prosecuted and found guilty of we don't know what. Crime. Now he has an opportunity to go to Rome. Praise your holy name, O oh God. The apostle Paul in this word is in a spiritual storm. Hmm? He is in an emotional storm. He is in a mental storm. And now he's about to enter into a physical storm. Amen. This word reminds us as people of God that our God is in charge of every storm and every kind of storm, be it spiritual, physical, mental, emotional, financial, that God is in charge of the storm. And that our God uses every storm, huh? every storm that comes into our lives to accomplish his purpose and his plans in our lives. Our God has already determined our end at the beginning. Hello, somebody. Yes. Hallelujah, Lord God. And because he has determine our end at the beginning, he has also determined the means by which he shall accomplish our end. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. You see, storms are used by God yeah. to accomplish his end purposes in the lives of his people. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Now, we as people of God must not deny hmm, the reality, the reality and the certainty of storms. Amen? We don't deny them today. Hallelujah. But we deny. We take authority against the right of storms to be a permanent fixture in our lives. Hallelujah. And so it is that this word in Acts chapter 27 reminds us that the storms shall come into our lives, all kinds of storms at different times. But the truth of the matter is that storms don't last. Storms don't last. So we need to get that in our spirit, people of God, that although the storms are raging, the wind is blowing. Hallelujah, Lord. There's turbulence all around. But the apostle reminds us that no matter what it looks like, that storms don't last. Storms don't last. See, when our hell starts breaking loose in your life, it's time to shake yourself. Shake yourself. Pat yourself on the back. Encourage yourself and speak to yourself and declare that storms don't last. Hallelujah, Lord God. All kinds of storms breaking out in the lives of believers. This scripture reminds us that we as people of God are not exempt from storms. Many people tend to believe that now that I've accepted Christ as my Savior, now that I've given the preacher my hand, that as my mother say, I'm going to now live on flower beds of ease. Everything is going to be perfect in my life. 